Hello, students of Dynamics. This is Dr. Dan Baker with another video. Today, an example problem related to relative acceleration. Okay, it's so relative acceleration, basically building upon relative velocity. Now, notice this is a four bar linkage, and we're basically going to be relating the acceleration here of point A over to the acceleration of point B. Now, we're going to be using the same overall system, this four bar linkage, that we did in the previous relative velocity problem. Okay, so if you'll remember that point C over here is in fixed axis rotation, point O is in fixed axis rotation, so point A is basically moving in a circle around point O, point B is moving in a circle around point C. So let's go ahead and map onto here the velocities just for a quick practice of that. We were given on this problem an omega of CB was equal to two radians per second. And if we know that that's the omega, we have VB going down. And A, of course, has to be moving horizontal due to the fixed axis rotation of member OA. So we can map the ICZV. Remember, ICZV is always perpendicular to these velocities. So here's one extension line. Here's the other extension line right down OA. So we found the ICZV. of member AB is over here actually located along OA. So given that ICZV, we know that we're going to have a negative right-hand rule omega. So my omega of AB, which also then makes the velocity of A move to the right and makes my omega here uh, in negative right-hand world direction. Okay, so see some of my other videos. I, I know I went through that quite quickly, but look for some of my other videos with mapping in the title, basically mapping these velocities. So what we're going to do on this problem is we are going to extend this analysis, and the extension of our analysis is looking at acceleration. Okay, so the acceleration that we're given is that alpha of CB is equal to zero. Or fundamentally, omega CB is going to be a constant velocity. So when we have these cases where we have a constant value, you might remember that in a four bar linkage that we're going to have all of the alphas and omegas relatively moving in the same direction. Okay, So if you have one member with an alpha going in the same direction as the omega, then that's going to be true on all the other um, bodies as well. The challenge we have on this one is not knowing whether alpha on CB is going with or against our omega on CB. I'm going to go ahead and assume positive right-hand rule alphas. Okay, So we're going to make an assumption here that my alpha of AB is going to look like that. And then positive right-hand rule here, my alpha of OA is going to be going around that direction there. Okay, So I know these are, these are opposing the omegas. And so if we made the wrong assumption, we'll end up getting a negative value for both of these alphas out of our vector algebra. So I'm going to write this relative acceleration equation of A relative to B. Okay, So in a really general sense, the most condensed version of the equation I could write, I could say that the acceleration of A as a vector is equal to the acceleration of B as a vector plus my acceleration of A relative to B. Now, I'm going to need to split each one of these acceleration terms into tangent and normal, but for right now, we'll just go with that, that basic equation. One nice thing about picking the equation is then I also can think about what position vectors that I want to use. And so these position vectors, I have one of them going here, we'll call this one RB. Another one going from O up to A, we'll call that RA. And then a last one here, we're going to match up with this direction of A relative to B. And so if it's relative to B, it has to start down here at point B. And so this is going to be R of A relative to B. Now, the dimensions in this problem, um, we have a distance horizontal between A and B of 75 millimeters. I'm going to keep everything in millimeters instead of converting it to meters. It doesn't really matter as long as you're Distant. Then we had a horizontal distance between O over to B, basically 250 minus the 75, so 175 millimeters horizontal. We had a vertical displacement um, from O up to A 
equal to 100 millimeters. And then finally, point B, let me sketch this out all the way over here. So from here to here to the top, essentially ends up splitting that difference. This ends up being 50 millime millimeters, excuse me, and this ends up being 50 millimeters. So my diagram's not quite scale as the dimensions of the problem go. That gives us the dimensions we can use to write our position vectors. So those position vectors, we have RA. Now keep in mind that all of these position vectors are going to use a standard X, Y coordinate system. That's because the motion of A and B and relative are all going in different directions. So we use one standard coordinate system to unify them. And I'll use bracket notation here. So X first and then Y. And so going from point O up to point A, we have 0, 100. Once again, all these will be in millimeters. Our B is going in the negative X direction, so this will be negative 75 comma zero. And then my RA relative to B will be, um, have two components, one of them in the negative X, so negative 175, and then another one in the positive Y, so positive 50 in millimeters. Okay, really handy to have those position, position vectors written out so that as you're writing your acceleration equations, that you can go ahead and grab those and pull them in. All right, let's go ahead and write out, essentially rewriting this equation here now with all the tangents and the normals. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and write these in terms of alphas and omegas and the different pieces. Okay, so um, first of all, splitting our A into both tangent and normal. And I think I'll go ahead and go with the color scheme here so we can see um, which terms are associated with which acceleration vector. So we'll go with black, red, and purple. And so in black, the acceleration of point A, it's in fixed axis rotation around point O. Now let's go ahead and just kind of as we do these, go ahead and draw them first before we write them out. So this would be my acceleration of point A normal. And if we're assuming that alpha is going in the opposite direction as omega, we'd end up with the acceleration of a tangential being opposite the velocity. Okay, so to write the equations for those two terms, we could say that our first term is going to be our alpha of OA, which is an unknown value, and we're going to cross that with our position vector, which is going to be my RA. So we can write that as 0, comma, excuse me, this would be positive 100. So we go up from O to A. And then the next term we have is going to be the normal. Now the normal is based upon our omega, so our omega of OA squared, keeping in mind here that normal acceleration a n we can write as omega squared times our negative r vector. Okay. And we like this version of the equation as opposed to the double cross product, which would be my omega cross omega cross r. Okay, both of those are exactly equal to one another. So let me get this out of the way and go ahead and put in the actual terms for the problem. So we have omega squared in the negative r direction. This r that we're looking at uh, is the negative of my ra. So that's going to be 0, 100. So I'll go ahead and filter through that negative next time I write this out. And I'm going to take my units out of here just to save myself some space as we come across. So there's my two terms coming out of acceleration of A. Now getting into my acceleration of B, and I think I'll go ahead and go with kind of a stacked form here, just because I'm going to run out of room horizontally and keep everything on one screen as much as possible. So my acceleration of B, I'll switch over to my red pen. Now we're looking here at the acceleration of point B, which is this point here. So I can add in if I want to sketch out those tangent and normal. Now my tangent, which if it wasn't didn't have an alpha of zero, would be going upwards right here. I could label that a b sub t, and I could say, hey, by the way, it goes to zero because my alpha is zero. Now the normal again is always going to be opposing that r vector, so a b sub n. And so for this vector, I'm going to go ahead. I'll write out all the terms here and then cross them out. So essentially, we end up with the alpha as given. So zero in the k hat, and we cross that into this r vector r b. So negative 75 comma zero. And then we're going to add to that our normal. So the normal ends up being the omega squared of this body. So that's going to be the two radians per second squared 
and it'll be in the direction of, and I'll go ahead and write this one with the negative built into the middle of it, right? So B um, here as given the problem, negative 75 and zero. And so this negative of RB, positive 75 comma zero. And that gives me the terms for AB. I just realized I wrote in purple versus red. So let's go ahead and flip that around. Sorry for that confusion there. So we'll go with that one in purple and the last relative terms here in red. All right, so for the last term, this is where this position vector becomes really, really important in thinking about these terms. All right, so we're going to have the tangent. Now the tangent tangential relative acceleration is going to be this alpha crossed into this R vector. Okay, that alpha from the right-hand rule is positive. And we're gonna cross that into this R vector. So you can think about if you slide your fingers essentially up out of the screen and then roll your fingers down toward on your right hand point A, your thumb should end up with a vector coming down this direction here. This is my acceleration of A relative to B tangential. And then normal is going to oppose that R vector coming back down this direction here. So we could say that this is going to be the acceleration of A relative to B normal. All right, so that's going to be my tangent and my normal. I could write those out. I will stick with my red here, as I mentioned. So I have an unknown alpha here again. So I have an alpha in the positive k hat as assumed. And we're going to cross that into my r vector. And my r vector in this case is going to be r of a relative to b. So negative 175 comma 50. And then we add in the normal term, so plus now we have a known omega on this body here. I'll just, I'll just go ahead and write this as my um, variable for right now, my omega of a b. We're gonna square that term times the negative of this r of a relative to b. So shifting this negative through, we have a positive 175 comma negative 50. And so there is my overall equation. I have six total terms, three tangent, three normal. So looking back at the previous example to insert these values of omega of OA and omega of AB, omega of OA worked out to be 0.428. Now all of our omegas, of course, are going to be in radians per second. And then our omega of AB came out to be 0.857, also in radians per second. What you'll notice is we're left with two unknowns. And that's a good thing. Let me label this, this alpha here. This is our alpha of AB. So these are the two things that we're looking to solve for in this example, alpha of OA and alpha of AB, two different unknowns. Okay, so this is our fundamental equation. Now you could also write this out in terms of full I hats and J hats. Uh, just to remind our brains here, in this bracket form, these are always in the form of an I hat first and then a J hat second. All right, so let's go ahead and work through this equation. Now, there's no way yet to go ahead and split this into X components and Y components, essentially I hats and J hats. I usually find I have to kind of go through initially figure out all the different terms and then, then separate um, at a later step. I'm gonna go back to my black pen, looking at this first row up here. Now, as we look at these cross products, keep in mind we have the cross product circle, so I hat, J hat, and K hat. And if we're going in this direction here with the positive right hand rule, then all of these cross products would be positive. So an I hat into a J hat is a positive K hat. So in this case here, we are assuming that both of our alphas, we said, are going to be in our unknown alphas in the positive K hat. So as we're crossing K hat into a positive J hat, looking at our cross product circle over here, K hat into a J hat, I'm opposing this positive here, so it tells me it's going to be a negative I hat. Okay, so we'll write that out here that we have our unknown 
alpha of OA, that's going to be times 100, and that's going to be in a negative i hat direction. Once again, I have a positive k hat assumed alpha. I am crossing that. Now the zero here is just going to give me a zero. That's why I'm ignoring that one. This one on the right-hand side is going to be a j hat. So a k hat into a j hat over with the cross park circle. K hat into a j hat opposes the positive, making it a negative i hat. All right, so next up, the thing I love about my normal accelerations is I don't need to do any cross products. All I'm doing is multiplying numbers. Okay, so what I'm gonna multiply here is my 0.428. I'll square that term, and then I'll take that times a negative 100. All right, and so this is going to be a value of 18.3184. Four and is going to be in the direction of a negative j hat. Now, the reason I knew it was in the j hat is because I only had a, a j hat term over here that was non zero. And it's really your choice if you want to write this out with a negative associated with the unit vector or if you want to put the negative in front of the coefficient. Either place works out equally well. Now, as I pull this into my my, my j hat specific equation, I wanna make sure I grab that negative value and you'll see that come along. So let's now move on to the next line and keep in mind that this is all part of an equation here. There's an equal sign. So this is all my acceleration of A, right? Let me go ahead and label these here just to remind ourselves that this is, uh, this is the acceleration of A. This is my acceleration of B. And then the last line here, we have the acceleration of A relative to B. Okay, so now moving on to my acceleration of B. So because I have this alpha equal to zero, zero times anything else, or fundamentally zero crossed with anything else, gives me all zeros. And so this is gonna be just a zero coming out of that whole first term. And then coming out of the second term, we're gonna have a normal only. Now this is all known values. So we have two squared, is equal to four, and take that times our distance of 75. We end up with a value of 300, okay? So it's going to be 300. What direction is that 300 in? See if you can answer that for yourself. So because our I component here is in the positive I direction, it turns out that this is going to be 300 in the positive I hat. Okay, because once again, multiplying just four times 75, and we pick up the direction um, from the I hat component there. So that takes care of that line, fairly simple. And then the last one, we have the most complicated terms. And so I'm actually gonna go down to my next row to make sure I have room for all of these. Both of them will have two components, X and Y components for both the tangent and also the normal. Okay, so we'll start with the tangent over on this side here. So alpha of this k hat crossed into this, this position vector. Let me go ahead and map out these cross products. So a k hat into a negative i hat. Now, if you have a negative value in your cross product, what I typically will do is kind of throw that negative aside. So if we have a k hat into a positive i hat, we would have a positive j hat, but we have to throw the negative back in. So then k hat into a negative i hat gives us a negative j hat. Okay, so negative j hat here. And then k hat into a j hat. We've already done one of these, but just to review, that k hat into a j hat gives us a negative i hat. We're going opposing against this cross product circle of positive, so a negative i hat. So now we just need to write out the alpha times those magnitude terms. And so that will be alpha of AB times 175 in the negative, let me get this one correctly here, 175 gives me the negative J hat. And then we add to that the alpha of AB times the distance of 50, and that was going to be in the negative I hat. Right, so the first term here takes care of the k hat crossed into 
the negative 175 i hat, and the second term takes care of the k hat crossed into the positive 50 j hat. All right, now adding in the normal terms, our 0.857 squared gives me 0.7344. I take that now times 175 for the first term. It gives me a value of 128.5. To eight, and that's going to be in the i hat, right? Because I'm just multiplying a number times an i hat in 175 millimeters in length. And then I add to that that same value of 0.875 squared, taking that times 50, and that's gonna be a negative 50. We end up with negative 36.722. Should be enough um, places there. And that's going to be a J hat. All right, so there are my miscellaneous pieces. Now, what you'll notice is that every single term is either with respect to an I hat or a J hat. And so, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to collect those into a single equation. All right, so let's take a look at these equations. Keeping in mind that we're going to have one equation all with I hats and one equation all with j hats. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just underline my i hat terms here. I have an i hat term there, and here, and here, and here. So let's bring those together. So we have a negative 100 alpha of OA. We're going to add to that a. Now I need to make sure I, I keep things here relative to my, my equal sign. Right. Keep in mind that this is really like one big long equation where there's my equal sign. And so I need to make sure that I bring in an equal sign here because it's the only I hat term on the left hand side of the equal sign. On the right hand side of the equal sign, I have 300 times I hat. I additionally in the bottom row here have a uh, alpha of AB times 50. Now I'm going to go ahead and edit this plus just to kind of trim down my notation here. I brought that negative out front, so a negative alpha of AB times 50. And then one final term here of plus 128.528. All of those are in the I hat. And then in the J hat, we have a negative 18.3184. And then this is equal to, coming to the right-hand side of my equation, I have a zero coming out of my acceleration of B, and then down into my acceleration of A relative to B, I have a negative alpha of AB times 175. And then additionally for my last term, I have a minus 36.722. Let me double check all those, negative from there, um, positive for that one, negative for this one, negative for this one, negative for the J hat. All right, I think I have all those different details all lined out. So now we're down to basically two equations and two unknowns. Okay, so we can take a look at this and decide how we want to solve it. We see that here there is only one unknown in this equation. So go ahead and Press pause real quick and compute that value. So I ended up finding here a uh, value for alpha of AB equal to a negative 0 0.1048. That's all in radians per second squared, just like all alphas are in radians per second squared. So if we now then plug this into my i hat version of the equation. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can compute this value. And so this should give you a value now for alpha of OA equal to a negative 4.33 radians per second squared. Okay, so that gives me my two answers that I was looking for out of this large vector algebra computation. Now, one thing I wanted to point out before we sign off is that the reason that I drew my vectors to start with is that if you are really struggling with these cross products 
or the multiplying of your omega squared times your negative r vector. Let's take a look at these different vectors, right? So AA, these ones in black, are going to correspond to your AAT and AAN. We ended up with a tangential acceleration, which we said was going to be, once we took the cross product, in the negative i hat, right? And isn't the negative i hat right here? showing to the left there in the negative i direction. And then we had a normal acceleration, as we show here, in the negative j hat. And hey, those correspond to these components down here in our vector algebra. As we go over to point B, we didn't have an acceleration tangential, but we did normal. And this normal ended up in the positive i hat. And as you look up to the top of the screen, there it is. There's our normal acceleration of B in the positive i hat. Now, looking at the tangent and normal here relative, right, this is the relative tangent. To remind ourselves that this first term here, everything here is going to be my acceleration of A relative to B tangential as a vector. And then on this side of the equation over here, this is all my acceleration of A relative to B normal. What we see is the tangent has negative i hat, negative j hat components. Let's see if that corresponds. So looking back at our diagram, here was our acceleration of a relative to b tangent, and lo and behold, negative tangent, excuse me, negative x and negative y. As we look at the normal here, it's going to be a positive x and a negative y. Let's see if that lines up, and there it is, positive x and negative y component. Okay, so by being able to draw those diagrams, you can actually cross-check all of your signs in this overall equation, and it gives you more spatial sense of really what's going on. Hopefully this helps you better understand these complex relative motion vector algebra computations. Thanks for your time today. I hope it's going well.